Hey everybody, Chuck here again. Last day of February in Central Michigan. I got my doors open, can you believe it? Well, this is PTV build number two. I've been anxious to get to this point for a long time. And we talked last time about gathering some parts together, and we did that. And now I've got a little bit of the frame done, so I thought I'd stop right here and, and throw a quick video up to give you some measurements. Um, obviously, we have six pillow block bearings there. We have uh, two rails here for the one track, two rails for the other track, and the two center ones. All makes total sense because you want to keep the uh, that axle completely solid and sure. Let me give you some quick measurements. We know the measurements because we're using tracks that are 180 by 60, which is the pitch, by 39 links. And if you multiply the pitch by the links, you'll get the circumference of the track. If you use different tracks than this, then you might have to do something different. But because I know, I've done this once, I, I know approximately what I need. So that's how I'm getting my measurements. So if, if you're going to build one of these along with me, make sure you're looking at the 180, 60 by 39s, Summit Tracks LLC. Great people. So here we go. We have the outside runners here. These are 34 inches. We have four of these things that are 34 inches. We have two of the center ones that are 42. I made these things 42 inches. Why? Because I wanted to stick it out a little farther in back. We want to go out front a little bit, just like I did this one, because I like the idea of a bumper. This one, when I did it, I did not come out very far with those two center uh, pieces of tubing. And, of course, I had to end up put a, an extension on there, so I thought I might as well take care of that right up front. So we've got 42. We've got 34 inches. We have now our six pillow block bearings with our uh, peerless differential here. And uh, these things are put on with, you know, 3 8 inch holes drilled through the square tubing. I put mine this time right at the very end. I wanted them really close, and uh, I was going to cap that off. Well, while we're down here, I might as well see those two. Hey, Chuck, look at those extra holes in there. What are them things for? All four of those things, extra holes. What does that mean? Well, I sinned. I sinned. <laughs> it's kind of funny. The definition of sin is missing the mark. And I missed the mark. So, of course it says all have missed the mark. And I certainly missed the mark on this one. Remember to measure twice, cut or drill once. Didn't like to do that. I like things perfect, but I already had these built. And I'll show you what I did down here as long as we're going to that point. So I just left them, turn them sideways. I may plug weld them, I don't know. Down here... Remember, we, we're inch and a quarter, square tubing, 14 gauge. I was going to do the whole thing, 14 gauge, but I did a little modification because well, this is the center two, and they don't have sliders on them, but this is, what, this is what my slider would have looked like inside the inch and a quarter using the one inch square tubing if that was like six, eight inches long. I don't like the way that fits. It's too sloppy. Had the same problem with this one with the one inch and I went ahead and welded some little washers on the three quarter that slid into the one inch and that was okay but I just wanted to be pickier. So what I did I picked up some one eighth inch inch and a quarter square tubing and that fits perfectly in there. I like that a whole lot better. Of course what does that mean? That means I had to splice which I did do. I put 10 inches on all four of the track rails here, I put 10 inches of inch and a quarter, eighth inch. I went ahead and put a splice in there, and I drilled it and plug weld all four sides, and I'm sure that's going to be just fine. So just to let you know, I changed things a little bit like that because I wanted that slider tight. We go up here and look. we got the pillow block bearings. Show the axle. One of the things I said I was going to do, and I did, uh, turn it around here. Where, where are we at? There we go. Keyway. I went ahead and had the keyway, the stock keyway on the Peerless only runs to about here, and I went ahead and had them cut it the farther farther in there because I want to run these disc brakes out farther. You could run them on this Woodruff key. But I wanted my brakes a little bit farther out. So see you can see where we went right there. So I it's worth it to the machine shop. I can take the brakes out. 
and I have a little more room to play with them. As you look at my old one here, you can see I had it real close to the engine stand. It's just kind of tough to work on. By the way, those are generic Chinese quad uh, discs, and I had to kind of make a round hub, and there's a shaft coupler I cut in two, and it's kind of Mickey Mouse. I'd rather have these. I was on a real low budget for this. I'm on a low budget all the time, it seems like. BMI carts. BMI carts, 19 bucks, probably 19.99. Same size, 6 inch, all ready set for the shaft. I like that. A lot cleaner, a lot better. So there's uh, the machine. You put it together. Of course, you're limited by the width of the axle, which is 38 inches. Um, right now, it's about 30... Six and a half, I think I, I got it like 30, excuse me, 34 and a half inches wide because the time you get the track on there and sets over, it's just under 36 inches. I wanted it, again, I want under 36 inches in case I ever wanted to go through uh, an, an entrance door. Just, just me, I don't know. But you don't have much more, couldn't go much wider anyway. You could go a little bit narrower if you wanted to, but I, I just wanted that kind of a parameter for myself, personal thinking. So, it's... Uh, about 34 and a half inches wide, 34 inch uh, track runners, 42 inch the main beam there. Oh, let me tell you about one more thing, something to think about. These bearings, I have all the grease zerts, these pointed backwards. Why? Because down here, you see this one's pointed frontwards. It's awful hard to get a grease gun in there. So I pointed these backwards. I have both of these pointed forward, same reason, hard to get to. But if you do that, just to note, the collar on the bearings, this one sits this way, and it's flush here. If you have this one setting forward with a greaser, your collar is going to be here, flush on the inside. So things are not going to be aligned perfectly, and I don't like that. But I think I wouldn't like, you know, the grease zert sitting around backwards, unless I find a... Uh, better way to get a get grease in that thing, which you're going to want to do to maintain this thing. You don't want to take the tracks off every time. So there we go. Oh, one other thing, as we go, uh, we'll we'll be back. We'll be building the the braces that go in here. Our next video, we'll really talk about the sprockets because that's an integral part of what we're doing. The Honda powered wheelbarrow sprockets that I went ahead. Let me see if I can run down here real quick. If you want to stick with me. Down here, you can see, those are mine. Those were copied off a Honda-powered wheelbarrow. I think it's an HP 250 or an HP 400, I can never remember. And I took it to a machine shop, and they just copied it, and cut it out of one-inch steel, and they cut the center out of it, and I made a hub. You can kind of see it. I made a hub to go on the inside and cut the inside of that out so it would fit over the top of that shaft coupler, that one-inch shaft coupler. And I like that. You could buy two of those things for the price of one Honda powered wheelbarrow sprocket, which is a cast deal. Plus, you still have to build a hub for it. So, I like those. Never have a problem with those, I don't think. Solid steel, they're a little bit wider at the top, and the Honda powered wheelbarrow sprockets are tapered a little bit. So, I like that a whole lot better. One other thing I'll just throw at you if we got a minute is uh, here's another upgrade I'm doing. I might as well throw these out here. Check this out. Let me get the other one. What do we have here? Well, our other vehicle had mechanical brakes. They worked just fine. But I thought, why not try to do something different? And I have some really cool, small hydraulic brakes. And they'll be operated in somewhat the same way. I'll run these, run the masters over by the steering linkage. And as the steering linkage uh, rotates it'll push that in it pushes that in it'll cause that to squeeze which causes the brake to activate which causes your vehicle to turn so that's all new for me that's something I'm gonna experiment with but nothing wrong with the mechanical ones they're cheaper but I thought I would try something different that's again an eBay deal and uh, you can find them all over the place too so anyway beautiful day in February we'll try to get some more information for you on the sprockets and go ahead and build some more if you have any questions let me know i'm really enjoying my vehicle here again with that uh 13 horse rather than the 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 six and a half horse that i have on the shelf now 
that motor is going to come off and go on this one but um, it was just a fun little test that we had with it. it runs really good oh by the way something I didn't mention on the other video I did take the governor out of that engine if you saw me run up and down the road I did take the governor out but I, other than that I haven't touched it I haven't rejetted the carb I haven't done anything with the exhaust but I did take the governor out real easy on those easier to take the governor out of these 13 horses than it is the little six and a half horse but maybe you'll find that on your own all right hey thanks for uh watching the video uh we'll catch you another time have a great day have a great spring and summer god bless bye